Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are taking a look at how L3 cache capacity affects the gaming performance of AMD's Zen 3 based Ryzen processors. Now this is a for science type video, it's not necessarily buying advice, though it does tie in nicely with a number of the recommendations we've made over the past few years, and it's handy information to be armed with moving forward. Back in late 2021, I decided to investigate the claim that more cores improves gaming performance. At the time, it was quite common to hear from users who had upgraded from something like a Core i5-10600K or the Core i7-8700K, so they're essentially the same processor, to something like a flagship Core i9-10900K. They were claiming that the extra cores resulted in big FPS boosts for their games. You see, the 10900K offered a 67% increase in cores going from 6 to 10, but it also saw a 67% increase in L3 cache capacity. So, armed with the knowledge that most games were still unable to max out all 6 cores of a 10600K or 8700K, this made me wonder, what was having a greater impact on gaming performance, the extra cache or the cores? The really cool thing is we could find out by disabling cores on the 10700K and 10900K while locking the operating frequency, ring bus and memory timings in place and this allowed us to compare 6 core, 8 core and 10 core configurations with 12 megabytes, 16 megabytes and 20 megabytes of L3 cache. And this is how the results turned out. For the most part we found that going from 6 cores with a 20 megabyte L3 cache to 10 cores with the same cache capacity that resulted in a mere 3% performance increase on average. So a 67% increase in core count netted us just a 3% FPS boost. However, with the six core configurations, we found that when going from 12 megabytes of L3 cache to 20 megabytes, that resulted in a much more significant 14% increase on average, providing us with the conclusive data that we needed to prove that cache was more important than cores for gaming when comparing processes of the same architecture. And at the time, the importance of L3 cache for gaming wasn't widely known, so the data came as a bit of a shock for most, especially those who had assumed that the bulk of the performance uplift seen when moving from a 6-core Core i5 or Core i7 to the 10-core Core i9 was due to the increased core count and not the extra cache. However, eight months after I published that content, AMD released their first ever 3D vCache processor, the 5800X3D, and the importance of L3 cache capacity for gaming became widely known. Given that, you might be wondering why we're revisiting the subject now, in early 2024. Well, let me tell you, I don't really have a good reason, I just wanted to, and I found this data interesting, so you're going to find it interesting as well. Actually, back when I made the Intel 10th Gen Cores vs. Cache video, one of the most popular requests was for an AMD version. Sadly though, at the time that wasn't really possible as all Ryzen 5000 series processors featured a 32MB L3 cache capacity per CCD. So the Ryzen 7 5800X for example, and Ryzen 5 5600X featured the same L3 cache capacity. Shortly after that video though, we did get the first Ryzen 5000 series based APUs, which were cut down to a 16 megabyte L3 cache. But even then, that wouldn't have made for a super interesting video, and really you had that data in the 5700G and 5600G reviews. But with the arrival of the 3D vCache parts, we now had Ryzen 5000 series CPUs with a 96 megabyte L3 cache. And really from late 2022 onwards, I could have made this video, but for whatever reason, I'm only getting around to it now, so oops, I guess. Now, full disclaimer, I didn't retest all of these CPUs at a locked frequency. Rather, they've been benchmarked using their default operating frequencies, which range from 4.4 GHz to 4.7 GHz. So there's as much as a 7% clock speed discrepancy. However, after reviewing the data, it became very clear that doing a full retest just to lock the clock speeds was going to be a waste of time as the data we have is very clear and shows exactly what we'd expect to find. All testing has been conducted using the GeForce RTX 4090 at 1080p, as this is a CPU benchmark, and if you don't understand why reviewers test this way and you'd like to learn more, we do have a video linked in the description which you can check out, rather than waste time explaining all the benchmarking basics here. 
Now for this testing, we are limited to a six core versus eight core comparison as those are the Ryzen CPUs we have available that feature 16 megabytes, 32 megabytes, and 96 megabytes of L3 cache. Finally, all CPUs have been tested using 32 gigabytes of DDR4-3600CL14 memory. Okay, let's get into the data. First up is Baldur's Gate 3, and there's a bit to unpack here. Firstly, cache capacity aside, it doesn't really matter if you have a Zen 3 processor with 6 or 8 cores, performance is going to be the same, assuming cache capacity is equal. Rather, the cache capacity is key here. The 5600X, for example, and its 32MB L3 buffer is 11% faster than the 5700G, which packs just 16 megabytes of L3. Then if we look at the 8-core data, we see that the 5800X is much faster than the 5700G, boosting performance by 17%, while the 5800X 3D is 27% faster than the 5800X. It's also quite incredible to see that although all processors use Zen 3 cores, so the exact same CPU architecture, going from 16 megabytes to 96 megabytes of L3 cache results in a mammoth 48% performance increase, so cache really is king. Next up we have Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, and here we do see a slight performance advantage for the 8-core processors, though the advantage in this example diminishes as the L3 cache capacity shrinks. For example, the 5800X 3D was 7% faster than the 5600X 3D, and we see a similar margin when comparing the 5800X and 5600X, but the margin does evaporate with the 16 megabyte 5700G and 5600G, which is a little bit unexpected. Still, it's the cache capacity that makes by far the biggest difference here, boosting the 6-core performance of the 5600G to the 5600X by 10%, and then from the 5600X to the 5600X 3D by a further 25%. In the case of the 8-core models, we see a 46% performance uplift when going from 16 megabytes to 96 megabytes. Moving on to Hogwarts Legacy, which has been tested with ray tracing enabled, and this seems to almost break CPU performance in this title. That said, although the game becomes very CPU limited, adding more cores doesn't solve the issue, or even help, with all three cache configurations delivering virtually identical results with either six or eight cores. What does make a difference is cache capacity, and there appears to be no ceiling here. The 5800X was 17% faster than the 5700G, while the 5800X 3D was 11% faster than the 5800X. This time we're looking at a 30% performance increase when going from 16 megabytes to 96 megabytes of L3 cache. Again, six core and eight core performance is very similar this time in Star Wars Jedi Survivor, though the 5700G was 11% faster than the 5600G, despite delivering comparable 1% lows. The margin shrank to just 6% with the 32 megabyte L3 cache models, and then 2% for the X3D parts. So, as performance is increased via a larger L3 cache, the reliance on core count becomes less significant in this title. Looking at the 6 core models, we see a 19% increase from the 5600G to the 5600X, and then a further 28% increase from the 5600X to the 5600X3D. It's quite incredible to see a 53% increase from the 5600G to the 5600X 3D, given that both CPUs feature half a dozen Zen 3 cores. We've known for some time that ACC is a lightly threaded game that is very cache sensitive, and these CPUs really highlight that. Firstly, there's no real difference between 6 and 8 core parts here, and that's particularly true when looking at the 32 and 96 megabyte models. There is an 8% margin favoring the 8 core 16 megabyte chip, so the extra cores do appear to be of benefit when cache is more scarce. Still, even if we look at the 8 core parts, we see a 23% increase from the 5700G to the 5800X, and then a massive 38% boost from the 5800X to the 5800X 3D. So this is a great showcase of just how much of a performance difference L3 cache can make. We're talking about roughly a 70% boost from the 5700G to the 5800X 3D, which is quite incredible. The Spider-Man remaster results are really interesting because again, although all CPUs tested here feature the same Zen 3 cores, clocked at similar frequencies, the resulting performance can be wildly different. Firstly, the core count in this matchup doesn't really matter. 6 or 8, the results are much the same. In fact, the biggest difference can be seen when comparing the X3D models, as the 5800X3D was 7% faster on average. 
But what really jumps out at me here is how slow these 16 megabyte models are. Just 60 FPS for the 1% lows. And this meant when comparing 1% lows, the 5800X was 44% faster than the 5700G. Performance in a Plague Tale Requiem was much closer than what we've seen in pretty much all other titles that we've examined so far. There's also a slight performance advantage for the 8 core models, and this is consistent for all three configurations. What's different here though is the small gains offered by the larger L3 cache. Just a 12% increase from the 5700G to the 5800X, and then a further 12% from the 5800X to the 5800X 3D. Still, you are looking at a 25% uplift from the 5700G to the 5800X 3D, which is a substantial improvement within the same generation. Assassin's Creed Mirage, like most games, loves a bit of L3 cache, but unlike most games, it will also make use of a few extra cores. Here we're looking at a 12% boost for the 5800X 3D over the 5600X 3D, a 9% boost for the 5800X over the 5600X, and a 4% boost for the 5700G over the 5600G. So interestingly, the performance gains for the 8 core models increase with the L3 cache capacity. Even so, cache performance still heavily outpaced the increase in cores. From the 5700G to the 5800X, we're looking at a 19% increase, and then a massive 33% boost from the 5800X to the 5800X 3D. Next up, we have Watch Dogs Legion. This title doesn't benefit from the extra cores, with identical performance seen from the 6 and 8 core models. Again, the real difference can be seen when increasing the cache capacity. Going from the 16 megabyte models to the 32 megabyte versions improved performance by 17%, while going from 32 megabytes to 96 megabytes boosted performance by a further 32%. All said and done, you're looking at a 55% improvement from 16 megabytes to 96 megabytes. Finally, we have Hitman 3, and again, core count isn't that important here, but cache capacity is. From the 5700G to the 5800X, we're looking at a massive 23% increase, and then a further 18% increase from the 5800X to the 5800X 3D. So in this example, we're seeing a 46% uplift from 16 megabytes to 96 megabytes. Okay, so here's the 12 game average data, and on average, we saw up to a 3% performance advantage when going from six cores to eight cores. So needless to say, for most modern games, half a dozen Zen 3 cores is more than sufficient. Rather, what matters is how fast the cores are, and a big part of that equation for gaming is of course L3 cache capacity. By doubling the L3 cache from 16 megabytes to 32 megabytes, we saw on average 18% better performance. But the gains don't stop there, going from 32 megabytes to 96 megabytes netted us a further 23% performance. And that means on average, we saw a 45% uplift when going from 16 megabytes to 96 megabytes while using the same number of Zen 3 cores. So there you have it. As we found with Intel's 10th gen core series two years ago now, cache matters, often more so than cores. And in fact, probably more so than we even realized two years ago. The arrival of AMD's 3D vCache process has really proved this beyond a shadow of a doubt, and they've caused more than a few headaches for Intel's gaming performance, and that's something Intel cares very deeply about. This data also backs up many of the recommendations we made years ago. For example, we really liked the value the Ryzen 5 5600 series delivered, and recommended it despite only having six cores, which at the time many believed would be insufficient for future gaming. Today though, 6 and 8 core Zen 3 parts are still delivering comparable performance, and of course parts like the Ryzen 5 5600X are still very usable. A Ryzen processor that we never recommended for gaming, especially discrete GPU gaming, was the cut down APU such as the 5700G and 5600G. The smaller 16MB L3 cache really hurts gaming performance, and while still usable, for the same money, the 5600X and 5800X offer much better performance. Of course, there are other disadvantages to the APUs, such as an older PCI Express spec, and in some instances, even fewer PCIe lanes are on offer. Still, the primary issue we have with those parts is the L3 cache capacity, and this data clearly shows why. Now, getting back to the core count for a moment, I'm sure the topic of multitasking will come up, 
And I don't want to delve into that here as we have already covered it in a detailed video, but in a nutshell, the myth that eight core CPUs will gain better than six core models because of multitasking. And I've actually never seen anyone making this claim provide any kind of scientific data to prove it. I did, however, do some testing of my own and I found the claims to be inaccurate. Moreover, for any serious kind of multitasking, you'll find the same unsatisfactory performance with the 5800X as you will with the 5600X. For example, updating or installing a Steam game in the background can lead to noticeable performance degradation, such as frame time stuttering, but this will occur regardless of how many cores you have. So until games are fully saturating the 5600X, you won't see an improvement with the 5800X, and by that time, I expect both CPUs will be struggling. Of course, there are certainly instances where eight core models of the same architecture are faster than the six core versions, but in those examples, the six core processors are still able to deliver highly playable performance. Making the core count argument a bit of a moot point, as you almost certainly would have paid much more for the eight core model. In fact, as a modern example of this, the Ryzen 5 7600, that costs $210 US right now, and it does deliver comparable gaming performance to that of the 5800X 3D. The Ryzen 7 7700, that costs $310 US, so that's almost 50% more, and you'll have a really hard time finding a game where the 7700 is even 20% faster than the 7600. In fact, I'm not sure such a scenario even exists. In fact, looking over our most recent data from the 5700X 3D review, the 7700X is just 4% faster than the 7600X on average. So in terms of value, the six core model is significantly better for gaming. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed the testing, then please do give it a like. You can subscribe for more content. And also we have Floatplane Patreon. If you want to become a Harbor Box community member, you get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, Q&As. So a lot of cool things there. If you're interested, check it out. But if not, perfectly fine. I won't hold it against you. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.